Welcome to the display gardens here at Four Star Greenhouses. Stay tuned for one of the most magnificent garden tours you've ever been on. friends welcome to gardening with creekside i am jenny and yes we are at four star greenhouses today we are going to take a tour of their display garden it is just breathtaking and beautiful this garden just to give you a little bit of some quick facts here it sits on about an acre and a half and there are over 18,000 annuals planted in this display garden just like the display garden at Pleasant View, this is free and open to the public and they would love for you to come by and explore and take pictures. Now, Four Star also will host parties and weddings and photo shoots and all these other kind of different things. So they do ask that you just call ahead to make sure that there's not a private event because they would hate for you to drive all the way over here and then not be able to come visit the gardens. Um, but it is just, the most spectacular garden, beautiful colors. Um, we just got finished talking with Ian who is over this whole display garden and he just did a magnificent job as Jerry is just kind of painting around. We're underneath this a little bit of a, of a pavilion. So when they have weddings here, this is kind of where maybe the ceremony takes place and they have seats and chairs out here. But you can just see behind us how Ian has designed these beds to be cohesive and to have colors that pop and continue not only on this side but even just around because basically there's a whole circle that comes around us. So you'll probably notice that there's a lot of like the deep rich purples whether it's from the Persian shields in the containers, the sweet potato vine that's in the ground the vertigo grasses that are in these massive containers. And then we come around this way and you will see the brand new coleus, that's the newly noir available next year that's planted in the landscape. So again, it's not so much that you have the exact same plant that's repeated through your garden, but you have the same color and it just makes your eye flow all throughout the gardens. So. The best way to, just, to do this, I guess, is just to jump in and let's just kind of go through again. This is not gonna be an in-depth, like plant by plant. These tours are meant for inspiration, for you to look at maybe a combo that you've never thought about putting plants together or just design elements. So we're just gonna walk through. While we're here, let's shoot over to this bed. This is, um, this is one of my favorites. Well, I can't say that. I shouldn't say that. That's like saying, who's your favorite child? Um, but you will notice that he uses, Ian uses a lot of pollinator plants in here. So there's two different kinds of salvia right here. We have the um, rock and deep purple, then you have play in the blues. And then play in the blues is repeated throughout these beds. I thought this was really great. Ian picks 16 feature plants and then he fills in with other little guys in there. So you've got the deep purple, playing the blues. Then you've got, I don't know if this is the fuchsia or the new one, the unplugged pink. But you've got just this gorgeous swatch of color and blooms. You'll also notice throughout the entire garden, he uses Heart of the Jungle a ton. So you've got that beautiful, big, huge um, elephant ear that is in there. Interestingly enough, I did not know this, um, here in Michigan, they deal with Japanese beetles as well. So I asked Ian, you know, how do you deal with them? And he said, they're not a huge problem, but he'll just come in and they knock them off in the mornings. Um, so if you see a little bit of some damage, that could be from Japanese beetles. Folks, we all struggle with the exact same things. Whether you're a first time gardener or you're this massive professional display garden, we all struggle with the same things. All right, um, let's mosey down I'm gonna show you down through here. Gorgeous. Now, this is a fun little pocket right here. 
You've got, again, that black sweet potato vine. You've got our beloved Wicked Witch is in there. You've got Chocolate Drop Coleus in here. You've got um, some ferns in here. You've got the Princess Alexandra, the sword fern. There's uses that a lot in his containers and in the landscapes right now. Um, just beautiful, really kind of fills in the area. And then of course we cannot miss and talk about these hanging baskets that are connected together basically to make this huge chain. I mean, look at that different kinds of pagonias. There's some cake pops in there. I see some of the plum dandy. Um, just oh, massive and gorgeous. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the bridge and we're gonna go look at some of the new introductions for this coming year. Here in the gardens, they have over 150 of the aqua pots that they put into use. And one of the uses that they have for them is to display the new, next year's upcoming new introductions. So this little area, this whole row right now, is the new introductions that will be available for you to purchase next year. So this is a Cascade Snow Angelonia. This was one of Ian's top favorites. He loved this beautiful cascade snow. Um, these are some the Safari, Safari Dawn, Safari Sky. And then of course, you cannot beat the new coleuses. I tell you, Proven Winters has got some of the best coleuses on the market. So this is El Brito. I love that name. This is a fun one. Um, and then of course, the newly new war that he has used in several of the beds of course, these are just massive growth. They can do sun or shade. Can you tell Jenny's a big fan of the coleuses? I very much am. Um, on this side, these are some, kind of some improved versions, of like an improved, um, not necessarily brand new, but just an improved version. Um, this is Augusta Lavender, which is um, covered in pollinators right now. It's a beautiful specimen, even just here by itself. And then, of course, would go in the landscape. These are, two, this is, are the cake pops. These are kinds of verbena. Um, as Ian said, by themselves, heh, but in a container, like a mixed planting, gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful because they have that trailing effect, that filler effect, so really pretty. Um, this is Suncredible Saturn. Now, you might be going, well, Jenny, that looks kind of pitiful. It does because Michigan got hit with this massive storm, excuse me, honeybee, um, massive storm just not that long ago, less than a week ago, and <laughs> the pollinators are attacking me. Um, massive winds, straight line winds, and so a lot of their plants got battered. And so the Suncredible, of course, as you know, it is that nice, big, airy, gorgeous plant and it didn't hold up real well to that massive storm. So they've trimmed it back. They have it in other areas, of course, that it looks great, but that's the great thing about these Suncredibles, that they can take a storm, they can take a beating, prune them back, and I promise in a couple of weeks, it'll probably be bigger and better than it was to begin with. Um, here we go. A new um, Black Eyed Susan vine. This is the Coconut Appeal. Beautiful, creamy white with that dark, dark throat. Of course, super vigorous. We love this. We love all those Black Eyed Susan vines. Just fantastic. Um, if you're looking for some massive color, of course, you cannot go wrong with the new Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. Gorgeous raspberry color. This is the Unplugged Pink Salvia. And I don't know if y'all can see all those honeybees that are all over honeybees. I see some other pollinators that are in there. Um, your hummingbirds, of course, will go nuts over this. They have it in another location, and when it's in the, sh currently it's in the shade, and we were standing there getting a little break from the sun, and the hummingbirds were all over that salvia. So, so nice. Of course, the new Violet Night has that beautiful, oh, sweet, delicate smell to it. So, Violet Night is another beautiful one container or the landscape would do great um, and then the blue my mind XL so blue my mind XL is the extra large version of our beloved blue my mind of ovulus 
The difference is that this will do, the XL will do really, really well in a container and competing with other plants because it has a more vigorous growth to it. Um, beautiful. And of course the new um, luscious citron lantana, this is doing great at our nursery in the landscape. Um, really nice, a new verbena. And then the last one was uh, the improved sky blue. Um, just really pretty. I want to take you into here. So I love that Ian uses a ton of grasses in the landscape. So these are, there's only two kinds. It's either a vertigo or fireworks. But look how these annual grasses give massive definition. It's almost like a wall here in the garden. So you've got that. Then you've got, I'm going to say this is diamond snow because it's more compact. So it just fills in the bottom. But look at this beautiful presence. Just, oh, it's gorgeous. And then, of course, our beloved lemon coral sedum is down there underneath. Y'all, you use more grasses in your landscape please it's gorgeous and then this is a fun little spot look they have swings so you can come and swing here um so this was fun talking to ian about this because he said he has these two little like secret gardens so there's one that's over here with a lot of nice warm bold colors you've got that um saturn land uh it's incredible saturn sunflower you've got the luscious citron lantana you've got some beautiful impatience in there it looks like wicked hot coleus in the back on one side so then the peachy keen verbena in there um, with those little pops of white with the euphorbia again has that grass in the back that really kind of unifies the area just a lot of fun colors and he was saying that in this section these two little secret gardens he uses this space where maybe the color palette doesn't go super well with the other ones um, so that's why he chose that to do that here so then come over here you hear the wind chimes don't you love that it makes me feel at home so then we come on this side and you have a completely different color palette those beautiful cool blues, whites, um, again, repeating the use of those grasses in the back. Um, so we have the avobulus in here, the ageratums, there's some superbenas, the wedgewood blue, um, our euphorbia, the callas that were in here. These were, he said, I believe the yellow calla lilies that are going to be new for next year with proven winners. Um, so just a really nice, sweet, calming effect of a bed. Again, the grasses are unbelievable. All right. Now what we're going to do is head up to, I think he called it combo alley over there at the pergola. Wait till you see these. Combo alley. This is a fantastic huge massive area that has aqua pots on both sides of the pergola and they match each other so there's the same aqua pot with the same planting but each of the sets of plantings are different so that people can be inspired and get an idea of how they can mix plants together some of these are tried and true our, our beloved plants some of them are brand new together just like with all combos, some are doing a little bit better than others. Um, <laughs> chocolate drop coleus, dear heavens to Betsy. I do not know how many is in there, but is that not just magnificent? So you have it in that aqua pot, and then they have it repeated, of course, throughout the gardens. Um, so not only do they have the aqua pots, but they have the hanging baskets as well. Um, the hanging baskets then they have also the window box hay rack for lack of better term on top of the pergola again it's not just one plant it's not that monoculture that we saw at pleasant view this is a mixed planting so again not right not wrong one's not less prettier than the other they're equally as gorgeous just different so be inspired by that um, but just gorgeous containers 
and Jerry hates it when I do this, but I'm going to back him up for just a second. Just because I want you to see, we're going to go right here. He doesn't know where I'm going. Look at this. Look at the, look how you can use these black eyed Susan vines. You may have never thought to put this very vigorous flowering vine in a hanging basket. But when you do, not only does it go up and climb everything, but it also comes down and trails. Now, this is a very vigorous grower, so you've got to you know, pair it with some vigorous growers. But is that not just stunning? Gorgeous. Look at this Artemisia. Oh, love that. That's that silver bullet. And then here, of course, we've got a little bit of shade in here. So you've got some more hostas, the uh, Queen of Hearts, maybe. It's either Queen of Hearts or Jack of, Dim Jack of Diamonds. Um, just gorgeous. And then, of course, don't forget to use your Dichondra Silver Falls in a hanging basket as well. So here they've paired it with Medusa, the double... Um, begonias and then look at these gorgeous things and they just watered so it got me a little wet Whew, feels good um, and the, the continues the combos just continue all the way down right here though is a great lookout point for kind of the whole nursery as a whole again um, as we were talking with Ian I was asking him how do you design like what is your how do you go about designing this acre and a half of, of gardens? And so his whole thing was in the interior this year, he used a lot of the purples, purples and whites. Um, and then on the perimeters, he used more of like the reds and the yellows. And because that's what the plants kind of deemed, he had a lot of purples, like with the new coleus, the newly new war, um, the, those kinds of things, the, the plectranthus so forth and so on with the salvias so lots of purples and blues on the center and then as we go out you'll see a lot more yellows and reds but is this just not like just just take this in and just see how beautiful this whole area is just magnificent um, and so peaceful I love that you can hear birds there's birds all over the place. I love that you can hear the water. We're gonna to go to the water feature in just a minute. And then of course the wind chimes. Just a very calming, peaceful place. So speaking of the water feature, let's head over now to that direction. Here on the back side of the gardens, they have this fantastic um, stream pond system water feature in here that is just, it's beautiful. Again, hearing the sound of the water in the garden is just fantastic. Now, through here they have a lot of perennials planted, um, petite hydrangeas. They, of course, this is the serendipity allium with those, again, it's absolutely covered in honeybees. This is, I might be wrong, I want to say it's Flashpoint uh, Nyphophia. Gorgeous. So they repeat them, right? So we have the purples and the yellows all the way up through here. Um, nice little seating area so if you work at four star you could come have lunch right here or if you're a visitor bring a picnic lunch look at this rose of sharon is this not beautiful of course it's in full bloom um, this is part of the chiffon series it has that great little frilly center that's how you know it's a chiffon beautiful again pollinators are all over it galore look down this way this is another pergola with tons of beautiful, massive color. They've got those Heart of the Jungles, again, repeated. They've got the cannas in there. I'm going to assume that that is the Vista Snowdrift Petunia. Then they've got red cannas. Just so incredibly gorgeous. This is another one I want to do next year. This is that Plum Dandy. Such a fun... Um, so Plum Dandy, so this is what I have learned from our garden tour so far. Plum Dandy, and then the Cerveza Lime. Look at this. This is a type of Plectranthus. So Ian uses this a ton in the garden, both in containers and the landscape. 
it smells has a beautiful fragrance to it it's actually can do almost kind of sedum-esque so we can do wet or dry sun or shade gorgeous makes a great house plant too he says um, so you can see he's repeated it quite a bit now we're going to come down through this way we're on the back side of the um, the water feature and over here you might hear a humming sound this is the production greenhouses so the production part of them are over here but they've got this beautiful lattice wall with window boxes hay racks that help kind of break up um, maybe something that's a little unsightly so gorgeous double layer of hay racks these beautiful evergreen trees in here they've got daylilies down here different kinds of shrubs hydrangeas um, and of course then the gardens continue on that way but coming on down through here again we're sweeping tons of gumfrina salvia the grasses of course and you'll notice that he does a lot especially on these big pieces whether it's the heart of the jungle or the grasses in groups of three so instead of just putting a grass right here it's the same grass but he puts three of them in kind of a triangular shape it really bulks up that section really beautiful on the back side you can see all the um, echinacea it's just so so incredibly pretty now there's one more section that i want to show you um, before we go we are on the far outer edges of the display gardens and so this is some of the areas we're talking about using those more bold colors those reds um, gorse we have the El Brito coleus nice you'll notice that um, Ian really when he designs these gardens he's designing it for photography for it being a, a great backdrop so he has big sections of the same plant and it's repeated so whether it's the coleus or the um, dark petunias and the lantanas these gorgeous panicle hydrangeas in here the red cannas um, daylilies you've got some trees growing up all of this is major pollinator attractors all the little bees are just flying all over the place I'm gonna say this is a quick fire quick fire hydrangea again mixed in lots of petunias coleus the same plants are repeated throughout these gardens again he used only two grasses vertigo or fireworks so notice here at the end of the bed he wraps the bed in the fireworks grass with the coleus in the middle it really kind of anchors the corner of the bed and just makes it beautiful so no matter what side of the bed you're looking at it's positively gorgeous and then one of my favorite little spots is the covered bridge so sweet again coming up using those same 16 feature plants he's got salvias the pentas in here our lemon coral all sorts the double up begonias and then when you come through look at this great bridge so sweet so he has the same hanging baskets going down both sides of the bridge and then these beautiful hay racks again planted in the rockin salvia the dichondra silver falls and it just makes such a fantastic statement so when you come to this part of the garden right on the other side you'll see a sign that says that's the private residence and so this is kind of where the gardens end but it is just a beautiful magnificent space to end on um, it's shady there's a great breeze right here um, but you can see behind us just kind of the whole layout of the gardens of course there's more to see there's little pockets here and there to really explore the whole garden you would need oh gosh a lot of time because it's just so magnificent and beautiful um, and just rich with texture so if you are in the area um, come by and see the gardens basically they're open from dawn till dusk again i would just go ahead and call to make sure that they don't have an event here because when they do have events they are closed i will put the um 
link in the description for you to contact Four Star so that you can um, check them out, get directions. But again, it's just an absolute beautiful garden and another huge, huge thank you to Erica, um, Tom Smith, the owner of, of Four Star, the entire Four Star staff. You have been so welcoming and gracious and just um, so kind and hospitable as always. We thank you so much for having us. You've been a wonderful host. Come see these gardens, people. You will be blessed and enriched for it. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.